guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Low Carb for Life. I'm Kristen and I'm going to be teaching you how to make some great low carb, high protein meals to go with anybody who's either on a keto diet or just on a low carb diet or just trying to find some new healthy ways of eating. Now this first item that I'm going to be teaching you today is something that I stumbled across because I myself am a, bre am a breadaholic, I'm not going to lie, I have loved bread my entire life. But, going through my new weight loss journey, bread is no longer on the table. So I had to find something low carb or no carb to substitute what I was missing. This recipe, the no carb, high protein cloud bread was just the thing for me. And I'm going to teach you today how to make it. Really easy, anybody can do it. Just come along and join me and let's get this going. Okay, so we're gonna start doing the cloud bread, but before we do that, we have to get everything that we need together. Now, for our ingredients, we need eggs. Three eggs, your favorite brand of cottage cheese. It can either be low fat, high fat, doesn't matter, cottage cheese. Then also your favorite low, no calorie sweetener. You can use any kind that you really prefer, Equal, Splenda. I happen to be using Stevia. I find that it doesn't have that harsh aftertaste and it's the closest thing that I've found that actually tastes like sugar. Then you also need your tools. You got measuring spoons spatula. You're going to need an electric hand mixer. And of course, mixing bowls. Oh, and I also forgot we have one more ingredient that you need. Cream of tartar, which I'll show you how to use. All right, now we're going to preheat our oven to 300 degrees. All right, and as that's going, we got it all preheated. We're going to start putting our ingredients together. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our eggs and we're going to separate them. Whites and yellows. We do not want them together. It's very crucial that these are separate. So, we're going to crack our eggs. And because I feel it's just so much easier to crack them into two separate bowls because not every egg comes out perfectly and you need this to come out perfectly. So I've got two small, just regular metal bowls. I'm going to put my white in one side, my yolk in one side, and then make sure they go into my separate mixing bowls. That way I don't get yolk in my whites or whites in my yolks. Or if I get a broken yolk, I can just put that to the side and keep it for the next day for breakfast or whatever I need it for. So, I'm going to go right ahead. Crack our first egg. And you just use the shells to just drip that white into the bowl and it keeps the yolk completely separate. Now, the cleaner you break the egg, the easier this will definitely be. Okay, so that's number one. Yolk in the other bowl. Try to avoid shells. Number two. And egg number three. Perfect. So now I've got my two bowls, one with my yolks and one with my whites. So my yolks will go in one bowl 
and my whites will go in the other bowl. A little bit of shell, you just take that out. You don't want shells. All right. Next, we're gonna add the cream of tartar. All you need is a quarter teaspoon of the cream of tartar. And you're gonna wanna take it and smooth it out, nice even teaspoon, right into the whites. Into our yolks, we're gonna add our one package of sweetener. Our cottage cheese. Three tablespoons cottage cheese. Now, we're going to take our blender and we're going to mix together the yolk mixture first. Just on a medium speed, not too high, you just want it nice and thoroughly mixed. my mixers give them a quick wash because I'm going to use them again to do the whites so we'll just wash these really quickly Like I said before, it's very important that the yolks and the whites do not get mixed because if you try to blend your whites with any yolk in it, it's not going to get nice and fluffy and a white piece and you're not going to get the result that you want which is nice fluffy cloud bread. It's going to be flat and just not as appealing. So now we're going to whip the whites on a little bit of a higher speed until we get those nice high peaks and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as it's ready. Okay so now we got our whites all blended and I'm going to show you what this looks like. Hopefully you can see it's nice and light and white and it's nice and stiff and we're not going to blend but we're going to fold. We're going to fold our yolk mixture into our white mixture very gently because if we beat it, it's not going to keep all that air in it. It's going to start flattening out and it's going to, again, not look the way you want it. It's not going to be nice and fluffy. It's going to be flat and just not appealing. We're not making cloud tortillas, making cloud bread. So we add our white mixture to our yolk mixture and we're going to fold gently fold until everything is incorporated. And it's going to look like a nice light yellow. 
I like baby chick yellow when it's all mixed together. Okay. Looks good to me. Give you guys a quick look. See, hopefully you can see it. I'm sorry, the lighting in here is not the best, but that's what it looks like when it's all mixed together. Okay, now we're going to take our baking sheet. Nice flat cookie sheet. And we're going to use some non-stick spray. You can use whatever you like. I have Pam. Whatever you like to use for non-stick. Give it a little spritz. So that it does not stick. And now this is clearly up to anybody who wants it because this is very versatile. You can be used as a bread substitute, it can be used like a pizza dough substitute, it all depends on you. The only limit you would have is your own imagination. For this recipe, makes me eight pieces of the cloud bread if I'm making just for sandwiches. And I have a two ounce ladle that I use to make eight pieces, so that's like two pieces per sandwich, so that's like four sandwiches. But if you wanted to make like a personal pizza, maybe you can do two ladles into one big one, whichever you want to do. Today we're going to make it like we're doing for no carb sandwiches. So we're going to take it, a nice even scoop, and we're going to just go ahead and put that right on our cookie sheet. This is a smaller one, so I'm only going to make two on this sheet. But you just put it on there, nice and round. Nice. Now, see, you got some nice round. And we're going to put this in our oven, our 300 degree oven, for a for these ones right here, because they're a little bit smaller, they're probably going to go in there for about 15-20 minutes. If it's a little bit bigger, it's going to be about a half an hour. So we'll set our timer, see how long this takes, and come back when it comes out. Okay, so now our cloud breads are done. took me about 20 minutes to make the two that I had shown you, and they came out beautifully. I'm going to show you right here. They've got a nice brownish color to them and they didn't stay quite round but that's okay. They're no, they don't need to be perfect. They came out exactly the way I wanted. It has that little bit of fluff to them. Nice fluffy texture. They're so warm so we're not going to mess with them. I'm going to take them off the pan, put them on a cooling rack, and then let them cool down so that you can store them. You take a little Ziploc bag and I usually put either plastic or wax paper in between each one just so they don't stick together because they can stick. Um, and you just keep them nice and refrigerated if you're going to eat them often. Or you can, ref you can freeze them if you want them for long term use. Either way. So let's go ahead and put this on our drying rack and I'll be right back. Okay, so now our fresh ones are in the rack and they're cooling, but I had made some earlier today just so that I had to be able to show a finished product. I have mine wrapped in plastic and in my refrigerator because I do have them often because as I said, I am a breadaholic and this is a nice substitute for that. High protein, no carbs, I don't feel guilty about it. So here's our nice finished product. And it's not too thick, but it's not too thin. And it doesn't taste like eggs. Now I thought when I first made this that it was going to taste, oh my gosh, it's just a big flat egg. And it's just going to taste eggy to me. No. 
the air incorporated into it makes it nice and fluffy and it gives you that illusion of having some sort of piece of bread. It doesn't taste eggy, it doesn't take bready either. So, take a nice little bite. Really good. So, that's all I have for you today. Thank you guys so much for being with me. I hope you enjoyed this and if you did, please hit the subscribe button down below and click the notifications so that when I do make my videos, you will be the first to know. Give me a nice big thumbs up for some more awesome videos. Leave some comments down below also. Let me know if there's any kind of recipes that you're really interested in. I know this is just the beginning, but we have lots more to come. So, I'm going to end this with saying, I know you can do it. I'm doing it. We'll do this together. And food can taste as good as skinny feels. Bye!